All right, guys. Today may be the day. Um, checked out my bow. I got it nice and straight. As you can see. And uh, so the straightening jig worked. I don't have... God, there's a lot of noise in my neighborhood. I never notice it until I uh, start doing a video and then watch it later. But sorry about all that in advance. All right. So I got me a string on it. And uh, I'm going to sit here and check the tiller. I just heard a snap. Hopefully that was the bark on the back. I left the bark on it just because I think it looks cool and it's so thin. I don't want to take a chance of uh, you know, compromising the uh, back. So I just uh, left it on there. God, if that was a snap, this is going to be a short video. Alright, so I'll come in here. I know I need to take wood here. Looks like it's bending kind of good there, but I want to get it closer, so I'll make this fade a little, just a little bit right here, a little less. And it bends really good, so I'll have to watch that close. And I'm going to be using my uh, scraper I made out of a piece of stainless steel plate and with a sharp 90 edge on it. Like that. Just do it like that. Turn him like this. Turn him a little bit every time. Turn him this way one strip. Turn him this way another strip. Otherwise, you'll leave gouges. When you come back, you don't want to go quack because you'll leave marks. You put it back. Put it slightly on there. Use it just a little. Okay, I got rid of all them pencil marks. That's usually all you have to do. That side's heavier. So let's see what we got. Okay, I'll just do this a couple times and make sure what I just shaved off is broke in good. And I'm not trying to pull it all the way back to break it or nothing. I'm just looking at the uh, bend. See, it's working in pretty nicely, actually. Still a little stiff right there by the handle on the right side. And that, you can actually see that. You can see how thick the wood is right there. And how it's not bending hardly at all, out, almost right before the tips. But then the tip is bending. I don't like that. Just a little bit right here. I want this part to stay stiff even though it's bending because I cut it too small right there. Maybe it'll be okay. Take a little bit off there and then do it again. Clearly, you can take and mark every three inches on your bow and then measure every three inches on your bow and get the correct, you know, on each side. This is bending too much right here. See, I got seven and a quarter here. And about that same distance over here. I got six and three quarters. So that's another way to be able to tell how much it's bending if you can't just see it by eye because it looks kind of good. I mean, it looks pretty good at where it is, but it's obviously stiffer on that side. Okay, and just to be clear, that that string's held by the loose string. You're only pulling it back to brace height. This string is just loose. We put up there as a guide like this. 
Okay. That string's not holding nothing. You didn't pull the bow back and put that little string on there, okay? That's just a guide. All right, just want to make sure you're not trying to bend your bow back and put that string on there. Because it's just a loose string, okay? All right. <laughs> Here's my line I decided I needed to take off. And when you get to this point, this is about all you got to do to get that hump out. Here's my line. Let's see where I drew my line. Okay. So you got my line drawn on there. All you want to do is just erase that line, really. Checking your thicknesses on each side. You don't want to just erase your line at an angle like this. You want to erase it straight across and thickness even on each side. And that should be about all you have to do right there. So I'll put it back on the tiller board again and stretch it out and we'll do the whole thing over. Let's say that's about brace height right there. So, you, so now I've dropped down to 35 at brace height. Still looks to me like the one now, the one on the left is a little bit stiffer. I think we got her stretched out enough for now. And look, it's good because it's coming back almost to straight every time. It actually has a nice little reflex deflex going on on each side. So if it maintains that, we'll be in business. Just from taking it from the, uh, the uh, scale over here to the tilling board, it looks like it. Oh, I mean. <laughs> now to me, it looks good over here. Seven inches, and uh, six and seven eighths. Hmm. What do you think? I think it looks good. The trick is, I found out, the more you get the entire limb to bend, the less chance you'll have of having a hinge or taking some permanent set. So, I want it to bend as close to this handle as I can and bend everywhere up until right about here. I don't want that to bend at all and I don't want this to bend at all. That's going to be my speed. I don't need to bend because that has not as much snap out towards the tips because it's uh, thinner. So I just want it to go forward with the mass of the uh, limb. So to do that, I'll get it as close to the handle as I can and uh, we'll do it like that and see what happens. But uh, I, I, I'm feeling pretty good about it. I'm liking how when I take the string off, it goes back and has that straight profile. Um, I think it's going to be good. I think it, I like it. I think I'm going to just take it off of there after I uh, shave that spot, bend it again, look at it. I think it's pretty close. I can deal with that. All right. After I do that, I'll sand it, and uh, I'll get back to you with that after that. Or you're supposed to wait and do the burnishing when you're done, but I'm going to do it before this time. I even try to get to the uh, finished tiller go ahead and push some fibers down and then do it from there because I might get very very close just by burnishing it so this is what you do. this is the old way to glass your bow right here
gonna put a little leather on there. That's, that's perfect. Actually, I could come in a little bit more. I'll probably come in a little bit more right here. It's a little too fat on this side, so I'll bring her in just a little bit to that line and just basically belly it out over there. But it's getting close. All right. But, uh, I'll start with 120, blend everything in nice, and then uh, go to finer and finer. Then I'll burnish it with the bottle again. But it's turning out good. All right, guys. So here it is. <clears throat> the uh, 40 pound crepe myrtle bow. It uh, turned out pretty nice, I believe. And uh, nice handle section. Nice tiller. Um, it's not extremely not super super fast by any means but I think it's sturdy enough built that it will last a long time oh, it's pretty accurate it's got a nice string pass right there cut in I haven't put the handle on it yet or uh, tongue oil I'm gonna tongue oil it and uh, you know make it look glossy and nice but first of all I had to come out here and shoot it I put my new string on and I got a pretty decent brace height now, a little loose but that gives me a little extra pullback on it. I don't want to break it you know, while I'm breaking it in anyways. I can tighten it up later if I need to. But uh, I got an assortment of arrows here in my old fox quiver. I got my uh, 50 to 55 spine. I got some uh, uh, 35 to 40 spine. And I got some uh, 45, 50 spine. And a whole bunch of different ones. I got nine arrows here. We're gonna shoot them down, down there at the target. I actually pulled a tape this time. It's 50 feet. And we'll see what we can do. Okay, I'll try that again. As soon as I, as soon as I started shooting, my neighbors came out and I had to quit because they were playing right behind my haystack over there. All right. Try this again. Shooting at 50 feet. Hopefully, we'll stay out of there. Alright, and in typical Phil fashion, they're all over the place. We'll go check them out. <laughs> but at least they all hit the target. So, the answer to the question, Jimmy, if you can make a, a bow out of crepe myrtle, the answer is yes. <laughs> I will, uh, put some pictures of it once I get her all fixed and finished up and tunnel off. Alright guys, thanks for watching.